All right, everybody, welcome back to Skywatchers Radio, right here live on PSN Radio. Now, without any further ado, our guest of the evening is here with us, Scott Marlowe. Welcome to Skywatchers. Welcome back, sir. Yeah, well, thanks for having me back. It's always a pleasure. It's always fun having you here with us, and uh, and talking to you is always a lot of fun. Uh, you know, you Pangea Institute, what you do with cryptozoology blows my mind because I'm not a big Bigfoot believer, as you know. But it's always fun to hear, you know, folks that are in, involved in that world and, and, you know, the stuff that's been going on since last time we spoke. What has been going on in cryptozoology? Anything that I've missed personally? Uh, well, the only good news is for the last year we haven't had any uh, uh, hoaxes from uh, yes. a certain certain individual <laughs> that I shall remain nameless <laughs> that everybody <laughs> knows. Actually, both of them have been kind of quiet. Uh, so, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, that's probably done a lot, although everybody has spent most of their time backbiting and backstabbing, yes. which seems to, which, yeah. which seems to be a, you know, a constant thing here in the Bigfoot dove hill. I wish they'd spend as much time looking for the big hairy guy as they do knifing each other in the back, but what can I say? See, that's, you that's know? one of the issues that I have with, uh, cryptozoology is the, the folks, it, it, look, it's not that different in, in ufology, let me tell you. Uh, well, you know, there's just, a lot of backstabbing you know, in ufology also. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, yeah, I'm sure there is. Uh, you know, I've got a few friends in MUFON. You know, uh, yep. <laughs> but, yeah. So I'm I'm, I'm familiar. Uh, but uh, then again, look at the presidential debate. Talk about crazy. Yeah, there you go. That's really not <laughs> going to that I mean, that would have made Jerry Springer proud. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> no. I had to go there. I can't stand either of them. So what can oh, I Oh, yeah, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can kind of tolerate Trump. I can't stand Hillary, but I can tolerate Trump. And you know, I like some of his points and some of his views. Okay. There's some stuff that really scares the crap out of me out of both of them. Well, uh, frankly, I think they're both both sides of the same coin. Uh, uh, they are. The same. They're, 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 both, that's a major issue. Above. Yeah, but Scott, that's a major issue we've had in this country for the last 50 years. It's, it's been yeah, the I know, but same Trump club is running everything. Same. Believe me. Believe me, he's more of the same. Uh, he did very good on that debate, though, considering he did, that though. he was probably high on coke the entire time. I'm being sarcastic well, hey, again. <laughs> some of the greatest work in media think, has been done I high on coke. I think the New York Times did it right with their cartoon today where Hillary's handing him a hanky and saying, at least you could have come prepared with a hanky. <laughs> <laughs> you know what was great about the debate? After the debate, yeah. they, they had an interview with Trump, and uh, somebody asked him about the sniffles. And he said, oh, it must have been because my, my uh, microphone was malfunctioning. Oh, and it was geez. just picking up more sound than normally. So it was, and he's trying uh-huh. to like make that well, as an excuse. Hard I would have just, just been like, I, I did cocaine before the debate. <laughs> I would just I would admit, I, <laughs> I did a lot of coke before the debate. That's, that's, that's what's really scary about Trump is literally he could have been like, yeah, I did, I did a bump before I did a debate. And his followers would still be he like, yeah, Trump. It, he could have done it on the air for crying out loud. <laughs> He'd only like, yes, wound up with Trump. more supporters. You know, I think, I, I, I think Bugs Bunny got it right. What a maroon. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but that's going to be our next really president. that you never see, uh, what was it? Um, who's the one with the red giant mustache that? Uh, I know who you're talking about. Uh, Sam. Sam. Yosemite Sam. Yosemite, Yosemite Sam. Sam. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know that they've actually taken Yosemite Sam off TV because he was too violent? Well, gee, yeah. I mean, never look, at, look at some of the cartoons from the 1950s. I mean, please. Really? Really? He's <laughs> yeah. too violent? The How road about the Roadrunner? Road you know what I'm That's saying? Like, they're not too violent? Come on. The, Coyote's oh, always trying to blow up the damn Roadrunner for no reason. Yes, but the, there was a big difference between children in the 50s and children in the, two, the 2016s. We knew not to do that at home. Oh, Very, yeah, true. That's true. Very true. That is true. We did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hey, we did. listen, what's really yeah. scary is Preparation H actually has the first instruction being do not put on mouth. Well, oh. I mean, I hate to tell you, but in Hollywood, they use it to take lines off of people. I mean, no, stop yeah, it. Yeah, they actually no. do. That, 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 that's a trick to take out wrinkles because it's got an astringent in it. Uh-uh, that's so nasty. Oh, my God. Yeah, it is nasty. Of course, it, I, uh, yeah, I, I would assume that you use a tube that has not been used for other purposes, if you know what I mean. Ooh. But it feels good on the whole. Hey, so anyway, about Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah, let's move on to something yeah, let's more credible. Wow. In wow. that vein. Uh, you know, oh, God. 
It's your fault, anyway, Scott. I blame you for the, for the well, degradation of this conversation. <laughs> well, I was getting to the point that we had a little argument on Facebook earlier today with a friend of mine that, uh, yeah, that basically that was pointing out that there wasn't much difference between the debates and Bigfoot uh, operation lately. So, so oh, no. you know, you know here, here's the thing, though. <laughs> there is more credible evidence that we have a legit chance of finding Bigfoot than finding a good candidate for president. I agree. I, you know, I've already and that's decided a sad statement. Bernie. So, right. I mean, that's yeah, all. Bernie would have had my vote if he would not have come out and endorsed Hillary Clinton so quickly. He like had he, did. To. he didn't have a choice or he yeah. couldn't stay a Democrat. Are you kidding? Besides the fact anybody that crosses the Clintons winds up dead. Then there's that. Yeah, yeah that is true. a little bit un- un- you know, <laughs> uncanny there. The, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah they, well, they're either extremely lucky or they certainly, um, you know, <laughs> stack the deck. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> you know, it's funny. Uh, Bernie, who wasn't exactly a millionaire before the you know the uh, election started, he, he was okay. But he, he had reported he had less than like 200000 in the bank or something like that, you know, before the, okay. uh, the whole thing started, before he ran for president. Yep. After he dropped out of the race officially, he went and bought cash a a house for five hundred thousand dollars. Well, that's nice. I mean, if, I wonder who then, paid for that. Then, house. then we know, then we know what Trump is doing with the money and everything else too. So what's the difference? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, you know I, I didn't realize he had finally purchased Doral. I'll never go there again. <laughs> oh, that was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I used to know the owners of Doral, but I didn't know they sold it. So anyway. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, it's not that bad. If you're yeah. golfing stuff. Yeah, but that's down your area, so you know what I'm talking about. It is. It is. So, I'll tell you yeah. what. It, it's funny though, because uh, you know, not to go on a, on a complete political tangent here, but uh, down here in my area, in the Miami area, Trump is actually not that hated as he is in some parts of the country. Like people down here actually like Trump. Like he, he calls Miami his second home outside of New York for a couple of reasons. One, because of the Palm Beach, um, you know, coffee uh, yeah, resort I, that he built. I, I, I know. I used to. I used to live down there, so I know. Yeah, so he's really well liked down here because. And, he and in the winter, it might as well be Manhattan South. Yeah, yeah, yeah. straight up. I mean, that's no. uh, very legit. He is actually really well liked. In fact, I, I, I can guarantee you right now he's going to win Florida. I mean, that's, uh, a, that's so a given. Freaking he's hope. Gonna, of course, yeah, it all depends on whether Pam. Bonnie I don't care about the, that vote. I office. care about the other vote in Florida. Well, you know, we know, we yeah. already know about the Chad, so let's not go there. <laughs> no, I, no, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm yeah. talking about what is the proposition. We don't take the 14? president anyway. I don't understand why everybody gets so up in arms about it. The, the <laughs> electoral not our votes. decision. The electoral <laughs> votes. Oh no, the president's already been picked. I mean, this this whole That's thing. Just, it's done. You know, it's a, yeah, it's a done you know, I mean, deal. This, it's this a dog just, and pony show. This is just a show in order to let us think we have the freedom we think we have. It is. It's, no, it's right. like the choice like in the Matrix. That's exactly what it is. I, yeah. you know, especially you know those of us who work in you know the UFOlogy field and the cryptology field and anybody who's ever done a little bit of research out of sight of mainstream media. If you vote, you're silly. You, I, I'm just you're silly. Oh, well, <laughs> like, I mean, if you just want to do it for fun, that's fine. But if you think that it actually counts, then you're silly. Well, I mean, take the Aurora. Sad truth. Yep. I mean, you know, there, you know, in your area, the Aurora uh, crash is a, is a great example. In my area, my God, I I deal with it all the time. I've tried to go get DNA from the red haired giants, and they've stopped me. And I'm not talking <laughs> men in black. I'm talking about the, tele- the, the the government gets on the phone and says you're not going. Oh wow, really? Oh yeah, wow. really. That's wow, that's extreme. That's serious. Like just nope. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't gotten that call and yet for see, anything. And then movie. they seize the skeletons. So, you know, fortunately for me, I know where there is one that in private collection, and oh. I've been given permission. So, when I am able to raise the go, you know, GoFundMe or Kickstarter money or whatever I can do uh, to uh, to ha- to get the test done, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, for Pangea, I'm going to get it, and they're not going to stop me. Go oh, do it. Do it, yeah. Scott. Yeah, yeah. you got our I money. will. I will donate. Give money to that that yeah. GoFundMe account. We got Absolutely. your back. We got your back on that one. Way back. We got your back. I way, do appreciate way that. We've got a, we've got a few <laughs> dollars back, that's been back. raised, but I definitely want to do that because I've got a very strong suspicion on the DNA the results that are going to come out. And if I'm right, I'm, you know, that, that'll be cool. But uh, I talk about that, by the way, in my book, Bigfoot Enigma. Ah, where shit. on the DNA well, spectrum do you nice expect bug. the – I'm sorry i got to ask, Name but where in the spectrum do you expect the DNA to end up? Uh, I think we're going to discover a different human species that – 
probably accounts for our big hairy friend. Uh, well, obviously, big hairy friend is not the missing link, so it's obviously a tangent. Oh, to God, please don't use that word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which I, missing I in physical anthropology? There is no such thing as a that's missing a, yeah, link. that's a complete. That's what I agree with. I don't think okay. there's a missing. That's link. like a four little word, really, because there really isn't a. It really is the link. Well, you have to. Well, there is. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There is an evolutionary gap that we still can't account for between, you know, where we are today and where, you know, our ancestors. I guess yeah, the best here, way to put here's it. the thing, though. And many, this is, this is, there are many, many gaps. Many the gaps, problem yeah. is everybody looks at evolution as a linear thing, and right. it's not. It's you know, when when you, we talk about family tree, we're talking about a three dimensional tree. It mm -hmm. branches off in all kinds of directions, and it doesn't necessarily lead to the same place. Correct. So, okay, I'll give you that. I mean, that's and that's why I don't like missing link. Missing link assumes a chain, and a chain is linear. Correct. That's I, that's why I can't stand that statement. I completely answered all what in a better way that I was going to say it. So I don't have to say it anymore. Okay, I'll Good appreciate job. that. <laughs> but but uh, I mean, there are many families of man. But uh, you know, and again, I'll relate this to UFO. If there is a UFO connection, which I strongly doubt, between Bigfoot and ufology because i mean i you know i admit sometimes there's all kinds of weird lights and everything but then swamp mm -hmm. gas that's for a lot of it but the bottom line is i'm not so sure that they are alien as many people seem to believe i think that what we're we are we're looking at if indeed aliens are involved in any way shape or form is bigfoot is what humans would be if aliens hadn't intervened and messed around with the genome now, my question following that up, though, is, Scott, why haven't we found one dead somewhere alive I'm not so walking sure around? Haven't. You know, why haven't again, we discovered one? Again, I'll refer you to Bigfoot Enigma. I'm not so sure we haven't. Well, what, and, I, well and I give some examples in the book. I mean, government-wise, maybe they found something. Maybe they know something that we don't. But I'm the common creative. folks, the common folks that are like like yourself, people that are out there like actually looking for Bigfoot, why hasn't somebody come across an actual Bigfoot and, and either shot it or shot some well, real footage or you know done something to prove that these things are real? Well, first of all, you know, even with these electronic cameras, which are great, by the time you pull one out and you let the thing charge up so you can take a picture, the thing's gone. So, I mean, they're very quick. They don't hang around. Yeah, but what about they're the trail camps that everybody what about body spreads camps? out all over the place? Well, body again, camps, dude. again, anything we touch it carries our scent. They're probably way more into things like pheromones and scent than we are because we've lost those abilities. So we put anything out there, they're going to know. Plus, I'm sure they at this point they recognize technology. True. There's uh, another way around it now with technology being what it is. How about flying drones over like mounted air mountains and trying yes, to see if you find and like that? Pangea just acquired two drones, so we can use nice. them for the purpose. Yes. Oh, very cool, very cool. See, that, yeah. I would think technology is going to eventually help us actually capture something in, like this. In time, real. I'm sure it will. Yeah. But you know, if you if you know the story of Zena, I'm not so sure she wasn't a Bigfoot. Uh, and uh, I, I, you know, Igor's. A, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with that story. You're going to have to explain that the one. The warrior princess. Late, late 19th, late 19th century, a Bigfoot-like woman was captured in the Republic of Georgia, what is the old USSR, and she was hairy and totally hairy, mute, uh, understood commands and words, but really never spoke, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Had uh, several children. Four of them died. Two of them survived. Uh, according to the anthropological people in Russia, uh, her her son that survived Kiwit uh, had relic hominin traits in the skull that they exhumed. They have claimed to have exhumed her body and she was human. However, I have severe doubts that the body they cover, recovered because nobody knew where she was buried, all those people are dead, uh, was actually her. And uh, so, I mean, that you know, you need to get Igor Borshev on your on your show for that story because he knows more about it than I do. But I did cover the story in Bigfoot Enigma and hit all the highlights. Uh, there was also a story in the same area coming out of uh, KGB releases after the end of the Cold War, where they uh, ca had captured a cr another creature like that in the same general area, and these are covered with hair and lice and all that good stuff. And uh, they thought it was a, a Russian partisan, 
uh, and it, you know, one story says they shot it as a traitor, and another said they let it go. So I don't know what the you know what the the issue is there, but these things have turned up all over the place, and uh, you know, it, I'm not so sure that they don't bury their own if not consume them. That's interesting, right there. Yeah, and of course, if you've ever left a dead body or carcass of anything in the swamp or the woods, mm. for that matter, nature's extremely effective in getting rid of evidence. Very true. Very true. Yeah. I mean, how many Ooh, times? Thank have you. you gone I should out? start taking notes. Okay. Yeah. How, how many times <laughs> have you gone walking in the woods and found a bear carcass? Right. Not many. I would say okay. zero at this point, actually. Well, there you go. So, I mean, that's <laughs> that's my point. And bears are about the same size, at least. Yeah, but I also size. have zero times of walking in the woods. I just say I'm afraid of the woods. <coughs> well, I can't say that I blame you. There's plenty of places that wouldn't be too cool to walk, especially these days. And down in your area, I don't want to be snake bait. <laughs> or mosquito bait. Gator bait. I mean, gator, gator doesn't gator bother bait. me. Gators don't bother me except in February. I don't like snakes. I mean, yeah. I'm worse than Indiana Jones. So, you know. <laughs> Good reference. Yeah. <laughs> now, we have a uh, thing here on the show, Scott, which uh, we wanted to ask you about. It, it kind of is uh, Sasquatch related. Uh, it's a saying that we have. I don't know if you, if you heard of it. If we, if we told you about this before when you were on with us before, but uh, have you heard of bat squatch? Bat squatch? Yes. No, I can't say that I have. I assume it's some sort of a flying <laughs> thing. It's a flying Bigfoot. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. Now, there's a gentleman called Paul Dale Roberts who was on with us a couple of years ago, and he's the one that brought this to our attention. I thought oh, for God. sure you would you would uh, know about that squatch. Yeah, yeah. No, I hadn't heard the of story. it. I'm, I'm tired of, of telling because, this story, yeah, but you, you guys, you got to hear it. Uh, well, go ahead, tell me. No, that was it. That was the whole story. He was oh, on okay. the show with us. Uh, oh no, 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 no. There was a guy Paul Dale Roberts that was on the show. That's what I was just saying. And saying. and word word, he too. he had claimed that he has it, had encountered. And was almost attacked by a bat squatch. And at which point we asked him to describe the bat squatch. Because, um, you know, obviously, you know, this is a critical thing in cryptozoology if bat squatch exists. And he's saying, you know, he's, it's bat squatch is usually obviously the giant seven foot plus giant monster, you know, that that's, you know, that could cause some serious damage. And I'm like, okay, really? Okay. Now how big were his wings? And he's like, well, they were about 20 feet wide, um, for the wings at which point I just had to halt him right there and say, yeah, yeah I'm what not mushrooms have you been smoking there guy. Yeah. I, I'm just like, I'm sorry. That wingspan is no way going to lift something that large of a creature, supposedly over 400 plus pounds. So, and at which point he responded, well, you know, squatches and UFOs have some type of a correlation. Maybe he was wearing an anti-gravity belt. At which point I totally lost it on the guy. Oh, I mean, God. I totally, yeah, totally yeah, lost you guys, it. Have you guys ever talked to my colleague, Ken Gearhard? Because he's an expert on all these flying creatures. No, no, I haven't. Oh, you should talk have, to Ken. Guess, yeah, out. he's got a couple of good books out there too. I just saw Ken up at the Mothman Festival speaking about flying things. Uh, mm -hmm. And at, uh, at this point in time, by the way, every time we someone points something out to us that there's no way we can rationally even try and want to believe, we say, "Yeah, I'm going to have to call Bat Squatch on that one." Uh huh. You know, that's, you know, we can't, you know. That's, when, that's I, our way of not cursing on the air. I, 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 curse on I, 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 yeah, I accept that. <laughs> okay. I uh, you know, a, a no. flying Sasquatch with bat wings that <clears throat> apparently only 20 feet across can no. lift the, lift him because luckily he has an alien anti-gravity belt. Uh, okay. Well, that, that's about the same as my referring to he who shall not be named. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's funny, though, when we uh, did a quick uh, Google search for Bat Squatch, uh, the one image that came up was practically a uh, slapper on the Hilarious. knee. It was hysterical. Uh, it was an image of a big, giant Bigfoot with wings, but he had, like, a, uh, the, the Batman jersey on with the bat thing on the cow, the cow on the face. Oh, God. <laughs> hysterical, hysterical stuff. And that's kind of become the uh, the signature image for Bat Squatch uh, on this show and I'm sure everywhere else on, on the planet at this point. Uh, uh, you, you would figure, look, Bigfoot is one thing. Yeah, Bigfoot could hide in the jungle or whatever. But a giant flying Bigfoot, people are going to see this. I'm sorry. It's just, you know. I, I, I would think so. I mean, 
you know, like, if you don't mind another shameless plug. Go uh, you know, I, <laughs> oh, no, I just, we would never just, get those. I just wrote a, 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 a fictionalized story about an encounter some people had in Old Town, Florida, with a gargoyle-like creature that was about the same size. And uh, it, it, it's interesting because I, I, when I penned it, I, have, I don't generally write fiction, but since I wasn't there to hear the dialogue in order to make the story interesting, I created dialogue so it's fictionalized, but it's based on a real account. Uh, and it's part of a, a several short stories I wrote in a new book called Weird Monsters that just came out September 1st. Uh, so uh, it's, it's on Amazon and all that stuff if anybody wants to read it. But I got a couple of cute stories in there. I like this one in particular because it was a young couple that the thing attacked. Uh, and they were skinny dipping in the Swanee River. <laughs> yeah, nice. Shortly after, shortly after that. So I, I, you know, it's it's kind of a gothic uh, romance sort of thing with the with the monster intertwined. Uh, but and then I talk about the pig man too up in Montiac, uh, which is on the Florida Georgia line. But uh, you know, talk and that's an, that attack happened at a nudist colony. So you can imagine those are pretty pretty funny stories. There's uh, <laughs> some really scary, hairy-looking guys there, I'm sure, as well, too, though. Oh, sure. And, uh, well, another story that's in there, and, and I know you guys know this one, is because uh, it's so Bigfoot-related, is the uh, Barden Booger. I'm sorry? The, the Barden <laughs> Booger. <laughs> yeah, you know what a booger is. A booger's a Bigfoot kind of thing, except this one has green fur. Oh, yeah, dark green fur, and it's and it you know, of course it's it reeks in the whole shooting match, but uh, that, and that's a cute story too. Uh, as Barden's over by Palatka on the on the St. Johns River. Wow. Still See, when you said booger, I was thinking about much. something completely different. I know, I know. You know. I'm not talking about the kind that you blow your nose. Uh, okay. <laughs> but there's a there's two more stories in there too, and they're you know they're they're, they're interesting and uh, you know that that kind of thing. And uh, but the other book that came out uh, this spring was Squallies, and that happened down your way. And that that story really blew my mind when I did the research on it because it took me a couple of years to research it. And uh, that's about human ape hybrids that were created supposedly at the Yerkes Institute, uh, which was at that time in Jacksonville mm. back in the 1920s. Human and, uh, hybrids, huh? Human yeah. ape, ape hybrids. You know, I've uh, heard that before, but that was in not the Montauk experiment, but uh, no. What's the uh, What's the island in New York that? Um, was supposed to be doing genetic uh, manipulation and uh, all sorts of Montauk. Weird... Montauk. Okay, it was the Montauk experiment. Yeah, okay, yeah, fine. Yeah. And, yeah, I've, uh, I've heard uh, about the, I've heard about human ape hybrids that are actually more than capable of learning. Well, and then the Russians attempted it. Apparently, they may have been successful or not. And the Chinese, not to be outdone, have they've they've done the same thing. Ostensibly, we were successful, and their progeny still exist. Uh, at a research station out in the Everglades. Now, and, I, 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 does the term humanzy mean anything? Yes. To you? That's what we're talking yeah. about, right? The humanzy? Yeah, 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 pretty much. Okay. Uh, but uh, what interested me is the whole thing interfaced with some nonsense that was going on out there, bootlegging at the time, of course. You know, that was Prohibition era. And uh, uh, it uh, interfaced with some things that were going on with Al Capone. And uh, when I checked the stories that I was told and the names, it all fit. I mean, everything fit. And I'm like, whoa, you know, this guy didn't die because he was fed to the gators by Capone. He he died because he was attacked by these things, yada, yada, yada. And uh, so I told the whole story through his young daughter's point of view. So it it, it sort of comes off like a, uh, I don't want to put myself in the same category as Harper Lee, but it's sort of like a you know, To Kill a Mockingbird sort of thing. Uh, and uh, But you know, I, I wove the story to you know, through her eyes and what happened, and I've got a couple of people who got very upset with me because they're used to my usual cryptozoology writing. They're not used to my fictionalized stuff. So I got, I got, got some bad critics from it. But, uh, but the story itself is based on fact. And, of course, I told everything I knew. If I knew how they created the chimpanzees, this was the big complaint or the human Zs, I would have put it in the story. But they're obviously not going to tell me that. Uh, so, you know, I mean, it, it, some of, the, some of, the, some of the, the, the comments you get from readers just blow my mind. <laughs> But uh, in any, it's it's an it's incredible. 
that you know they they expect you to read minds and you know that's not how it works and uh, you know many documents that you would love to get your hands on the government ain't about to let you touch so what can i say <laughs> Scott, when you go into a researching Sorry. for one of these books uh, and it takes you a long time to do the research i mean how do you get started especially when you when you have very limited evidence uh or well, this no evidence started- at times this one started at Ripley's, believe it or not. I was doing a book signing up there in, in St. Augustine, uh-huh. and one of the people from down in the Naples area that uh, showed up for the show came by, sat down with me, and told me the story, and I was intrigued. Uh, of course, I didn't let on I was intrigued at the time, but I was, and I started looking into it because I didn't want anybody to start embellishing stories and things to get me more interested. You, if you knew how many people try to hoax me every day, you you, you would flip. <laughs> yeah, I so I've, I've got a, I've got a particular way that I pursue stories that I you know, I want to look into, and uh, so as I said, I started checking this thing out. And uh, you know, all the things that I were told dovetailed with information I was able to find. And of course, that's historical societies and police records. And I mean, you you know, and, and then the the weird thing about this story is, you remember the old Monroe Station? Of course. Monroe Station yep. figured very prominently in the story. It was like sent, you know, like <laughs> Human Z Central. Oh wow! Uh, mm. At the time, because the, everything that happened happened near it. But as soon as the book came out, Monroe Station burned to the ground. And I wow. uh, and I'm like. What the hell? Did I get too close to the truth? Did the government pick up the book? Yada yada yada, and and you know want to hide something and make sure that all the evidence was destroyed. But uh, it, I mean that's that really was uncanny. It unnerved me because you know, they they seem to follow what I do, particularly when I'm talking about things like the red haired giants. Uh, you know they they don't seem to like some of the things I do. So <laughs> yeah, apparently <laughs> now, why do you think that is? Well, I think maybe because I get a little too close to the truth sometimes. Yep. And uh, they just, you know, they, they've got a vested interest in seeing that it doesn't come out. And I'm lucky enough that, you know, I don't, I don't hoax. I don't get involved with hoaxes. I don't want to get involved with hoaxers. I'll check them out, but that doesn't mean I'm going to do anything with them. And uh, I think the credibility factor has something to do with it. You know, I haven't had MIB show up at the door. I'm not going to say that. I was going to ask you, have you had that knock yet? No, but I, I've been Mr. expecting Marlo. it. <laughs> I've been expecting it. Uh, of course, I got two attack cats, so I'm not really worried about it. But uh, there you go. <laughs> you know, they're, and they're pretty good judges of character. Yeah, my 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 particular <laughs> favorite cat is is sitting on the desk right now, giving me the. You know what time it is, Uncle Scott? It's time to go to bed. What are you doing on the air? Uh, anyhow. <laughs> By the way, I posted here on the uh, Skype chat a picture of uh, Bat's Watch, the one I was telling you about oh, with the uh, Batman thing on it. So check it out and, and share with us your thought on that image, that drawing. Oh, well, well, if I can get to it. Let's see. I got You put it on the uh, – oh, The call oh, chat here. Uh, call chat, call chat. Where are you? I've got, I can see two of you pictured with PSN radio on my thing. If you, yeah, Where? if you go all the way to the, to the right side top, you can see the uh, there chat we go. Icon. Uh, well, I still only see the three uh, three icons for you guys. You got to click the uh, hmm. the chat icon all the way to the right top side. I did. You did. It says PSN Radio added Pangea Institute Inc. That's all it says yesterday. Oh wow! You don't see the uh, the image on there. Oh, oh, are you looking at the right chat though? That's the thing. Okay. Hmm. Because you, you should well, see everything that we, that we share on here with you. Maybe if I back out of Google here, I'll find it because I had it up there before. Uh, let's see. Was up? Uh, Crystal Storm with a laughing icon. Danny Burton's typing something. Uh, hmm. That's the okay. PSN radio. You're chat. you're in the PSN yeah. chat. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah if if you stay there, I can put it. I can post it on there. If you want to just stay oh, okay, there. Go ahead. I'll stay yeah. right there. I want everybody's uh, opinion on this uh, bat squatch. Right in. It's it's great. It's great. <laughs> Wonderful. Can you imagine? We're gonna. Can you imagine I would love like to that see that actually out around. there. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> oh, like, gee, are what? we talking? Are we talking Gotham City or Gollum City? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Either or. <laughs> a little yeah. bit of everything, you know. Yeah, that is like the, that's that. the missing link right there, Alan. That is. Right there. <laughs> yeah, well, give him the URL, then it'll be a link. There you uh, go. <laughs> uh, oh God. Ah, uh, man. Let me ask you, what's the, the funniest hoax you've come across uh, dealing with cryptozoology? 
<laughs> the Bigfoot in the freezer. That had to be I'm the sorry, freezer, the right? What? Yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I remember that. You want to tell them about that one, Scott? Oh, uh, hmm. well, that, that was, that was he who shall not be named with the other yep. he who shall not be named. Yep, yep. Uh, you know, former police officers supposedly from Georgia who uh, stuffed a Bigfoot costume full of pig entrails and all kinds of other nonsense and froze it into a freezer in an extremely poor copy of the yep. Minnesota Iceman. And, uh, oh, God, I went nuts when that thing happened. I tried to call Fox News, and they wouldn't even listen to me to tell them <laughs> it was a hoax. And, yeah. of, course they, of course, they just recently had me on the local Fox station up here. Uh, talking about cryptozoology and, and some of my books. So, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It apparently at least got me noticed by Fox. But, uh, they didn't, they, they would, all they want is ratings. It's, that's all any of that nonsense ever wants. It's so, a numbers game for them. Yeah, like of it course. Or not. I mean, it's funny how quickly they fall for that kind of stuff, though. I mean, and, and again, you know, maybe it's part of uh, them wanting to believe so badly that they ran with it. Or maybe it's they knew it was a hoax and it's just another way of them covering up whatever might really be out there. Who knows? But they Look ran with that Fox all the way. News. Yeah, then there's that, too. A bunch of idiots. Bunch of Fox News. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not to yeah. disparage Fox News, but, you know, uh, considering the people... Well, yeah. the people that, is all entertainment. That's yeah. all it is. Well, so. the, the people they just let go should tell you everything. Uh, anyway, <laughs> CNN is not much better than Wall Scott, Let me tell you. No, no. they're not. I mean, they're all owned by the same. They're all owned by the same money. It, I mean, it's literally entertainment. You know, yeah. how are you going to die? Find out at seven o'clock. Come on, well, <laughs> pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> You know, <laughs> like so, it, it's not surprising that they run with those stories because it's probably a little bit of both. A, a little bit of we've got to participate in the cover up, and B, screw it. The people who watch, you know, our news station are dumb anyway. Let's just run it because hey, ratings. You there know? you go. Can you imagine all these wealthy people abs- laughing up their sleeve at the morons who listen to all the crap that we're fed every day? Crazy. If I would be, I'd be laughing. If I was them, I would be laughing too. I don't I'd be like, how dumb are you? I don't <laughs> like I, you're falling for it. I, yeah, I'm, I'm giving away the 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 you know, the, 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 you know the, the farm here, but I don't even watch network TV anymore. I don't either. I uh, I, I don't go near it. Yeah, I, other, I don't, other than what, sports, I'm the same way. I don't. I kind of stay away from network yeah. TV. I have my football uh, yeah. TV. I have my football team. Rather, I have a couple of shows that I watch. But we don't even have cable. Everything I need to watch, I download. Yeah, I'm a much. Netflix. Even, I'm a net, I'm a Netflix, Hulu, and and YouTube yep. fanatic. That's it. That's, that's all I ever watch. Up. And I even have a TV set that's set so that's all it'll play. By the way, have you seen Stranger Things on Netflix? No, I haven't. <laughs> Watch it. Watch it. It is incredibly cool. Very cool series. I'll have to watch that one. I, you know, I'm always looking for good Bigfoot shows. Most of them are nonsense. Uh, you know, the uh, and the only show that I, that I've done that's on Netflix at the moment is uh, Bill Shatner's Weird or What, mm. uh, which uh, which aired in Europe first and then Sci-Fi picked it up. I think it's uh, season two, episode two. It's on the monsters. But I'm at the tail end of that one talking about the monkey man in uh, India, which is similar to uh, uh, the squallies, which I knew about was doing the research on at the time I did that for Bill. But uh, uh, then the Monster Quest has some of the episodes I did on YouTube. Uh, some of them Very are cool. segmented and some of them are full episodes, but those, I mean, those are, th- those were fun to do. I miss Monster Quest because they really tried to do a good job. They had, they couldn't. And of course, uh, History Channel tried to kill it in the fourth season. <clears throat> and, and that now ultimately su- succeeded in doing so by dictating what they were going to cover. Uh, you know, but, uh, and of course I lost total respect for History Channel at that point. It, it the next thing was, uh, you, you know, won't be the first guys one. Run- yeah, you know, limp-wristed guys running around looking for antiques. Like, you know, that didn't do anything for me. But anyway. Well, that is a step up from Ancient Aliens. Yeah, well, yes, uh, up to a point. Jeez. At least, yeah. at least, you know, Von Donikin was good for the first two seasons. Uh, but a lot of that was BS, as you well know. Of course, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, some of the th- some of the claims they made about Puma Punko maybe made me laugh. Oh, my goodness. But, you know, it's funny because we had a guest on a few weeks ago who's a very nice guy, John Polk. And, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's got a book about Yahweh and how Yahweh was uh, an alien. Um, and he was Enki from uh, the Sumerian texts. 
And uh, so far, so good, right? But then he starts quoting Van Daniken, and his source really is Van Daniken. And I'm like, well, at that point, you lose me, dude, because it's just about everything Van Daniken says is either made up by him or it's just translated, you know, in his own mind. Uh, he's like another Sitchin type. He doesn't have a scholarship anywhere. It says that he's actually a scholar of languages. Uh, he doesn't have any kind of degree for this type of stuff. And, you know, we're supposed to take him at his word. That, yeah, this translation is exactly what it means. Mind you, well, nobody yeah. ever translated it like that before he was around or after. It's just him. Well, I mean, he's got a couple of good points, but there's, you know, the evidence is meager at best. Uh, and, uh, they're, they're, I mean, it, I personally believe that there was a more advanced uh, human civilization of some kind that existed uh, you know, pre-Deluge. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm yeah. with you with that. In fact, look, the planet's been here for billions <coughs> of years that we know of, that we theorize 4.7 billion, maybe even longer than that. I can guarantee you in that kind of time span, humanity or a form of humanity has come around and gone several times, whether it be through natural disasters, wars, whatever. We've come and gone, you know, and we've, we're still here in some form or another, evolved, uh, perhaps maybe genetically uh, manipulated by ourselves or by other beings that have come down. Who the heck knows? But the fact well, that's is... that's why the giants interest me. I mean, you know, why, yeah. if we have megafauna with many, many other types of animals, why couldn't we have megafauna humans? Right. Makes sense. Well, what about those 20-foot-long skeletons that they found and have started showing up in museums around the world? Well, they, many yeah. of them are disappearing. I mean, I know the Smithsonian has had plenty, and they've, they've disposed of them, uh, or they've got them well hidden. Uh, and there are other museums where they exist. Uh, as I said, I've done a lot of checking in order to come up with these skeletons. A lot of them are in private collections. Uh, mm -hmm. So there are people out there who are usually un <laughs> unbelievably wealthy, uh, that uh, have access to things that the common people don't know anything about. And you know, whether that's good or bad, I don't know. But, uh, you know, they, of course, they, you know, they make their money by knowing more than everybody else, which no <laughs> one no one on our level ever seems to quite get. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, if, I ever, if I ever get yeah. that Donald Trump money going, I guarantee you I'm going to find out all the secrets. Well, I'm not so <laughs> sure he's got as much money as he claims. I think he's kind of like J. Paul Morgan. Or Getty or whatever. No, Morgan. J.P. Morgan? J.P. Really? Morgan, yeah. I mean, Morgan didn't have near as much as, as they said he had. But he, he, was, he, was, he, he was backed by the Rothschilds. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure yeah. that's also the case here with, uh, with yeah. Donald. But, uh, it, and still more, but still more money than I got. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the moral of the story is when we get the money, we're sharing the secrets. Correct. Well, I mean, now you even said, Scott, that, you know, you're going to try to get your hands on, on something and, and, you know, from a private collection. So I would think that a private collection could possibly be a good thing if they're willing to let somebody, I guess, you know, I've touch already got it in writing. Things. Right, right, right. So, I mean, I, that yeah. is the good thing about a private collection. I think we'd have much better luck approaching it. Well, depends on who's got it, but those private investors. Versus, you know, having to deal with the government or museum or something like that. Well, and that's that's the problem. If I give out any information whatsoever that allows them to track what I'm doing or where I'm going or, uh, you know, uh, who the source is, it's going to disappear again. Right. I mean, I've had that experience far too many times with far too many things, so I know better now. I mean, how, do you, I just, how, how are you going to be able to be on top of something? You say you do discover some kind of blood or fur or an animal, living animal, how, how are you going to be able to stop them from, like, confiscating it and making it disappear? Well, I can't. And how are you going to validate it as well, too? Right. Well, there, there are certain places that I can send things outside of the reach of the U.S. government. Mexico? Uh, now, you're <laughs> asking me to give up information that you know I'm not going to do, so why did you ask? Well, yeah, it's kind of like, it's like, it's like the Hillary Clinton thing, you know, put all the information on the website and just give the secrets away. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's a, there's an easy way of of dealing with it. You make sure everything is put out there, and of course, I would only do it with a double blind study. But I've got several DNA labs in mind, and uh, uh, I will certainly have more than one sample to work with. My Let's question is a question to you, Scott: Is you know, if there is such a secrecy going on with uh, within the government, why is it that we get reports from the news media whenever something happens, like the Bigfoot and the uh, in the freezer and, you know, alien reports, UFO reports and stuff, because that does break through sometimes, and mainstream media does play this stuff. 
why even cover it at all if there's a cover up and if there's this embargo? Well, let's see. A slow news day is one one reason, and another be would reason, be yeah. there's yeah. other things going on that they want to cover up so that they bury it in nonsense. Good answers. Good it answers. Makes distraction. Makes distraction. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's the in many cases it's the O.J. Simpson trial. Mm. Uh, you know, not total nonsense. You know, you, you know, the only thing that was important there was the verdict. Yeah. Which man, they messed that up. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we can go there, but you no, know, I just you know, I think the, the, the easiest way to refute facts is to throw out all kinds of misinformation. And now the CIA and all of the other equivalents around the world have social media, and the idiots who believe everything they read on it. You know, it's funny you say that because it is a I think, great networking tool, and also not. You know, yeah, but here, here's the thing for the blessing and the curse at the same time. But for the, this kind of field, and for not only cryptozoology, but for ufology and you know anything paranormal, you know, we we've talked about this before, guys. Where we're going to be the ones that gives us ourselves disclosure. We can't wait for the government to do it. Social media absolutely. is one way to go about it. If you capture oh, something, post it immediately. Just put it out. Well, put it out there. Yeah, if you put it out there. Social media is extremely powerful. I mean, I I literally watched it with what's going on with the North Dakota Access Pipeline. I mean, that started out with just a very small blip on the radar, and now it's everywhere. And that is that is because of social media. So social media is absolutely powerful. The problem is that people don't have discernment, and there's critical thinking skills that are lacking. Well, it's a two-edged sword, like just about everything. And the, the good news is that you can get it out there. The bad news is the government can hack it in a heartbeat. True. If not, you, if not spread disinformation. Very true. Yeah, yeah it, but once it's out there, if it goes viral fast enough, I mean, there's not much they can do with that. Oh, point, God, right? yeah. Well, that's why yeah. that's why it's great to have YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, and all the others, and it, yeah. you know, and, and be get it able to get it out there on all of them at once. Yeah, the uh, only thing the only thing you got to be afraid of is then they'll just start attacking the source and you know try to which go they do. I mean, I, yeah. know, our website is attacked constantly. Yeah, and there's no good reason to pick us out specifically, but fortunately, I've got a really, really, really intelligent uh, webmaster uh, who you know can can get the site back up in seconds if he needs to. And uh, you know, if we ha- if we get uh, a really bad attack, he usually figures out a way. And has even fed back information, so I know exactly where the sources are and who's who's hitting us and when. Uh, Scott, and how many identified instantly? How many times have you, has the website been attacked in the last ten years? If you don't mind me asking. My, my website? Yeah. <laughs> A couple thousand. Oh my goodness! Really? Yeah. Crazy. Wow. You know, I mean, why, why would a, a you know an everyday garden variety hacker pick one particular site like right. that? Yeah, that makes absolutely no sense. Well, and then, like I said, the big thing is credibility. People believe our site because we don't post anything that's crap without telling you we think it's crap. Important. That's extremely important. That is very bizarre that it's been attacked that many times. That's, it is. Yeah, it is. And, I, and I know exactly who's doing it because I can tell where the attacks come from instantly. I've got, I, get a, I get a DNS address that tells me exactly where those attacks are coming from. Huh. Are they all U.S. based or are they overseas? Oh no 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 no. Some, some of them are based. Most of them are based in, in the U.S., but not all of them. Some of them come from Paris, France. Oh wow. Some of them come from the Ukraine. Some of them come from Moscow. Putin, he's up to it again. Well, whatever. <laughs> you know, and I can understand. You know, I mean, I have put things up there that have to do with the, you know Stalin's ape experiment, so I can see why they'd be interested. Now, other than uh, the Sasquatch, Bat Squash, the Human Z, what other forms of cryptozoology do you guys cover on the uh, Pangea website? Well, when it, whatever is interesting. Uh, you know, anything that we're working on at the time where we've got a report, we put the report up. Uh, if uh, any of our, our Pangea fellows like Ken or uh, Adrian or Adam, uh, you know, are working on particular subjects, we get that stuff up there pretty fast. You know, we all have non-disclosure agreements that we have to work under with specific projects and specific things. But the second disclosure is made, it usually goes on the site. Gotcha. And does, uh, like, say, for example, like the Loch Ness Monster, does that fall under cryptozoology? Oh, sure. Okay. So, has there been so a- do things like werewolves. Oh, okay. You know, you know not, all, not all cryptids are the, you know, are, are the big five. 
Right. Now, I mean, know. has there been any uh, sightings of uh, either the werewolves or, or Loch Ness Monster in the last uh, five, ten years? Yeah. We, uh, again, I, on Weird Monsters, I write about an encounter, a, a lady named uh, – um, oh, gosh, I can now – I write my book and I can't even remember her name when I want to. Oh, but uh, that's not a good time. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, it'll, come, it'll come to me when I don't want it. Lacey. Uh, but uh, she had an encounter driving home from California after a messy breakup. Uh, and, uh, encountered one up on, uh, uh, a rural road, uh, outside of Tallahassee. And I, I, I wrote about that encounter. Oh, wow. Now, when we talk about werewolves, are we talking about, uh, a man that turns into a wolf, some kind of a wolf creature that just, uh, is always a wolf? I mean, what, what exactly do we think these werewolves are? Well, I mean, that, you know, that, of course, is the, the, the traditional view of werewolves. Right. Uh, and, it, and you know, transmutation might be a factor. I don't think so. Uh, you're f- aware of the dog man stories, I trust, and the, right. uh, the the wolf man stories that, you know, again, one of our Pangea fellows, Linda Godfrey, uh, <clears throat> has done a great deal of research from up in Wisconsin at Bray Road. So, you know, what they are and whether, you know, what they, you know, how they get to be the way they are is anybody's guess. Uh, I don't take a stand on, on transmutation. I don't believe in magic. <laughs> but uh and it, you know that that Harry Potter stuff is fine for the movies but you know I don't believe it happens in real life. So uh they're probably born that way whatever they are and it's just another creature that we don't know about or it's some sort of weird mutation of Bigfoot. Now have you seen and this you know kind of, I'm going to try to link it into the werewolf phenomenon but have you seen the uh the I don't know if they're still that young but there were a few years ago there were a report of a couple of kids that were in the circus uh, who were covered with, with hair and looked like werewolves. Uh, yeah. have, you seen, have you seen those kids at all that I'm talking about? Sure, oh. congenital hypotrichosis. That's been going on for thousands of years. I had no, no idea you... how to pronounce it. <laughs> I was that I was a just, tough one for me. I like, just said it. That was brilliant. Yeah, just that came just right a, out with it. Like rolled right off the it. tongue. I could never do that, by the way, Scott. <laughs> well, but, I mean, you go back. You, you mentioned Enkidu from the Epic of Gilgamesh. Right. All right, there you go. Classic example. That's the yeah. that's the first Bigfoot ever mentioned in literature, and it's the first piece of literature ever written by a human being. Okay, okay. So, in other words, this is something that's been around since uh, the trials of Gilgamesh. Well, actually, if you look at the genetics, Maybe uh, and I'll try not now. to get too terribly technical, but the switch that turns off the hairiness in human beings is is something that is relatively recent genetically. So mm. all the human reconstructions that you see uh where they look like they've been shaven with a Gillette Atra, bull honky, <laughs> that's not what they look like. They all look like Bigfoot. Oh. Uh, so and and there are, are many cases going, you know, even into uh, they're very famous cuz there's even paintings that have been done of them uh of people with congenital hypertrichosis in Europe uh from back in the Renaissance. And again, I got a book out called uh, Bigfoot in Art History that that subject is covered very well. Huh. <coughs> now, with uh, you know Montauk, that we t- like we said earlier, and the experiments that happened there, could it be a ch- could there be a chance that maybe they created some kind of a werewolf hybrid with humans, and maybe that's what people are, the, what this person saw, or what people are seeing also. Well, genetically, no. I mean, if you're talking about a woman mating with a wolf, uh, like the uh, Romulus and Remus stuff from from Rome, forget it. That's not going to happen. But <laughs> could they, could they do a genetic mutation by engineering the genome? Hell yeah. Well, that's the idea. Yeah, that'll be the yeah. idea to do a genetic. I mean, you know, that's Island of Doctor Moreau stuff. But yeah, right, right, right. But I mean, that kind of stuff is possible if we're talking about you know genetically manipulating uh, genome and doing it in the laboratory. Look, right now they recently uh, put out there that they, they have an artificial womb to create babies mm-hmm. artificially. Uh, yeah. Now, you know, the, the government usually is about 40, maybe 50 years more advanced technology technologically than they claim or they say, you know, on at the least. forefront. But at least, that you know, that much more advanced in reality. Maybe even 100 years more advanced behind the scenes. Well, if you can take so, a human genome to create insulin, human insulin, by grafting it onto an E. coli cell, don't, and that and that's now technology that's about fifty years old. Yeah. Don't you think they can go a lot further than that? That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that yeah. some of these things that people are seeing are just mistakes that the government's had within their own projects that escaped somehow, and that, that mm-hmm. people have this encounter. Next thing you know, it becomes yeah. a book. 
It's and that's rights. and that's why Squally's. Uh, I find Squally's to even though I didn't tell it in an extremely scary way per se. It's a scary story to me because it tells me that my government is screwing around with shit mm. they shouldn't be screwing around with. Pardon my French. You're and, French? Uh, All right. Yeah, well, never tell. You know, <laughs> we could we could go F O C H instead of the other way. No, it's uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know the bottom the bottom line is that you know we shouldn't be playing God. True. That is so true. But just, that doesn't st- that doesn't stop people from doing enough. it. Well, Unfortunately, I mean, look at the sociopaths in in Congress and elsewhere that get off by controlling everybody. Mm. Uh, you know, it's funny that you mentioned we shouldn't be playing God, but you know we are going to be doing that for the next uh, millennia. We're going to be playing God on at least. a lot of different levels. You know, and it's funny because that kind of, in a, in a sense, is the arrogance of men who thinks they can do something better than what nature did or what God did or whatever the being might be. And we're and we're talking about in the future having race a, a race of people that are genetically perfect, you know that's something that the, oh the, the God don't go there to. that's that German eugenics nonsense that we that is up Charles Davenport yeah yep. we, we we were doing that stuff in the 1920s before Hitler ever got started with it of course yeah and, yeah and, he, and most of the stuff they did they got from us so you know I I know what we're capable of and I'm not I'm not deluded to think that we're any less fascist than they were. I mean, wouldn't that be cheating if you, if you like, you know, start creating babies that are perfect? I mean, yeah, it, it is cheating. But you know, but here's the thing, and and, and you know, and I'm I'm not a particularly religious person, uh, per se, but it, we all talk about original sin. If you're a Christian, and, and you know what I think the original sin was? What? The thing that makes us do exactly that. The little bit of knowledge we got. Got to oh, start yeah. on a path to become God. Right. Okay, and trying to do so is the original sin. Well, that was the whole purpose of the apple. You know, she ate the apple from the tree of knowledge. Well, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, the second we lost the animal in, in, innocence of just being there and being who we are and what we were and started thinking, well, we can do a better job of it, that was the original sin. Amazing. The arrogance of man. Exactly. And and that that's the problem. That is Uh, the problem. We already have a question from Sebastian. I think he might have been one of the people trying to call in, I'm not sure. Uh question is um see First Nations people, especially here in Canada over there, have always claimed to to live to some extent either surrounded or parallel to Bigfoots. Why is it that no serious research is being done? In their lands, seems like we just take their stories, and that's that. Or has there been, uh, in a, has there been any studies that he's not aware of? As far as I know, Doctor Jeff Meldrum, uh, Don Don Jeff Meldrum, uh, has done some work up there. As as Paul first with the uh, out of the University of Ohio with the with the the Bigfoot hair that has been recovered up there. Uh, I know other researchers like John Green have done work up there. Uh, you know, John, I believe, has passed away uh, recently, as I recall. But uh, I know that people in Canada are doing the job, uh, and I'm just sure that they're not talking about it as much as we do here in the United States because they're not as media happy up there as we are down here. I wonder why that is. I mean, is, well, is Cryptozoology big up there in, uh, in Canada at all? Or is it just oh, it's enormous. Okay. It's enormous, but I think the people are more Trudeauish than they are – Trumpish uh, up there, if you know what I'm getting at. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, another shot of Trump, right? So we went with that. Huh? Shot of Trump. Well, I mean, if he's going to make himself a target and live in a fishbowl, don't be upset when somebody taps on the glass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what an this analogy. What yeah, a now, Scott, I was reading in your bio earlier. You teach, correct? Yes. You have a, a whole. Ac- Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, if anybody's interested. Uh, you know, I, I've pretty much stopped working at, uh, at uh, the, the Florida Keys Community College, uh, and uh, I had been doing some things, particularly summer camps for kids at Tillsboro Community College. But I was approached uh, by an outfit down in Australia, of all places, asking me to begin teaching online so it would be available to everybody in the world uh, who was interested in doing any cryptozoology work. It's called YesCourse.com. 
And my first two courses are up there now uh, in cryptozoology. There's going to be four and probably six by the time I'm done. That will include a field study, a lab research uh, uh, type course, in addition to uh, cryptozoology one and two. That's interesting. How does the lab research exactly go? I mean, well, I'll, I'll tell you what to do and what equipment you need to get, and then you're going to do it yourself and post the results online. Now, I'm not going to let you loose without knowing what you're doing, particularly right. not with forensic reagents. But, uh, you know, the nice thing is you'll get a certificate and everything when you complete the study so that you can hang it on the wall. Granted, it's not going to be an accredited course because that, you know, there is no accredited course in right. zoology since there's no, no field of study at a regular college for it yet. But at least it's better than having nothing and uh, going out in the woods unprepared because many, much of the evidence that is being, quote, collected in Bigfoot dumb is being handled so poorly, a la the Ketchum study. Uh, that it, it, if it had any value whatsoever, the value is negated by mishandling and not knowing what to do with the labs, not knowing how to properly collect the specimens, yada, yada, yada. How so, upsetting is that for you to, to realize oh, that, that is a fact? It, it's extremely upsetting. It's got to be. You know, it's almost as upsetting as people who don't know what they're talking about talking on, on Facebook. Which is about 90% of the people on Facebook. <laughs> that happened. I was yeah. about to say, yeah. <laughs> you must not go on Facebook at all. I go on Facebook more than I want to, but it, it leaves me highly depressed. I lose an IQ point or two times on Facebook. I had a doctor's appointment today, and the doctor the doctor looks at me and reads reads my responses to his little survey. Says, you know, you're depressed. I said, yeah, but I got good reason to be depressed, doc. So that doesn't make sense. You know, don't give me any pills. I don't want them. If I, if I got a reason to be depressed, I'm depressed. Yeah. But, yeah, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> Normal human reaction. Don't try to drug me. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because I was, you know, I've gone through a little bit of a depression myself in the last uh, year with the passing of my mother and stuff earlier in the year. And my father was like, "Well, why don't you go seek therapy?" You know, early this is you know a few months ago when I was really depressed, and he was telling me, "Why don't you you know get some therapy? Maybe they can prescribe some medicine." I'm like, "Really? I'm I'm 38. I don't want to start taking drugs for depression now. Like, it's a little too early for that, pops." Like. I'll deal with it on my own. But it's funny how, like, everybody kind of, like, wants to drive you th to that train of, oh, medication will make you feel better. Just take oh, some drugs. yeah. Let's teach our kids that a pill solves everything. Right? <laughs> you know you how much you just let it? time take its course and let, you know, nature do what it's got to do in your know, depression? You, you know, when you have a loss like the one I had, I mean, that, there's going to be depression regardless of how many pills you take. I'm aware of it. My mother yeah. passed away a year ago, May. You know what uh, I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. I feel your pain. Uh, but... You know, my point is, I, you, know, you, you know my background. I took pre-med. Mm -hmm. I didn't finish because I knew what HMOs were going to do to the profession. But uh, the bottom line is I know enough to know big pharma is full of what makes the grass grow green. Correct. And, yep. uh, <laughs> and I don't let big pharma dictate what I do. Mm. Yeah. 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 That's, it's, uh, it's a sad world we live in where every answer is like, oh, just take some pills for it. Uh, yeah. Take yeah it's, it's sad. Yeah. Sad, sad yeah. stuff. Uh, now, have you, has anybody ever told you that? Name. Oh, say it again, there, uh, Alan. And we lost Alan. Alan down. Alan down. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, there I we go. Hear you now. To the Prozac Nation. Well, that was enlightening. Or you can take poor man's Prozac, called ginkgo biloba, and kava kava, and uh, St. John's Wort. Or you can take the Richmond's like, drug and just do a lot of cocaine. No. You'll be okay. I <laughs> just do. I'm coke. sure that Donald can tell you plenty about that. <laughs> sniff, sniff. Yeah, oh, sniff, sniff. Oh my goodness! Oh, that debate was so classic yesterday. Oh, uh, yeah, tell tell goodness. Sebastian I agree with him. Sebastian, he agrees with you. There you go. Totally agree with you. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Now, Scott, I mean, so because people, you know, your your course teaches uh, people how to, you know, handle, you know, anything that they might find in the field. I are there any other places or books or anything that you would suggest people read before they go tromping around and potentially ruin any evidence? Oh, God, yeah. Uh, there, there are so many of them. <laughs> We'd be here all night. But – yeah, they, people need to read from qualified individuals like Dr. Meldrum, like uh, John Bendernagel, like Lauren Coleman, uh, and, and read everything you can get your hands on. 
don't go into it watching CSI on TV thinking, oh, I know how to do this, because you don't. <laughs> CSI doesn't do it right. That's a sad truth. Yes. Yeah, that's all, that's I mean, all you TV know, guys, yeah. Stop TV. with the entertainment nonsense. Entertainment is not science. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it, it's funny because for a long time, in, back in the early 90s, in mid nineties, uh, I used to tell everybody, when I get older, I want to be in the, uh, FBI because I want to be on that program, you know, the X-Files. I want to oh, search for yeah. aliens. And I used to think that was a real thing. Like, no kidding. Back in the early nineties, I was a kid. I used it to is, honey, it. but you're not going to get into it. But well, it's the same thing. It's sad. It's, it's sad. the same thing as the books that I just wrote. It, it's fictionalized stuff based on facts. Right. And, you know, and I know the difference. Obviously, some of my readers who have written some critical statements about the books don't, which upsets me and, and you know, leaves me feeling, especially when I write an introduction that explains fully what I'm trying to do. Uh, you know, it just tells me people don't really read. True. Uh, you know, and, and that's, that, you know, that's a shame because that's you just you miss out idea. on so much. Mm. If you don't, uh, you know, if you don't keep up on things and, and, you know, even following instructions that you find on the internet are not necessarily the right way to do things. Right. But, yep. you know, and, and I do, I get, I get all kinds of people contacting me with, with harebrained schemes that I know that their objective is to get on finding Bigfoot or some other television show. And then they want to stage a hoax and they're, they're fishing for what they need to do in order to make it believable. Believe me, people, I've been around long enough. I know what you're up to. Don't try to pull the wool over my eyes. You just make yourself look like an idiot. I mean, have you ever had any, like, uh, not a, a billionaire, but anybody wealthy or, or with several billion in the bank approach you and say, you know what, I want to I want to take an expedition to try to find a Bigfoot and make it a legit thing. Has that happened at all yet? Not billions, but millions, yes. And why hasn't that happened yet? Or has it happened that just I'm not aware of? Because they want to approach it for the wrong reason and the wrong way. Gotcha. Again, it's all about making money, right? And well, it's like it's products. like the people who went you know went into the Valley of the Kings to excavate so they could get front page news, and not because they were really looking for Tut's tomb. Mm. You know, I mean, they just speaking of the Valley of the Kings, I got to yeah. ask a question here. Yeah. Um, what do you know about the wonderful possible caves in the Grand Canyon that might have had Egyptian hieroglyphs and sarcophagus? I'm sure they do, but I don't know enough. So I don't think okay. I'm in a position to, to, to comment. Uh, but, you know, I've seen things all over the world, particularly on the west coast of Australia, uh, that tell me the Egyptians were better traveled than we think they were. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. Yeah, I've got another question from the chat room here. Uh, they yep. want to know if you've ever seen a Bigfoot yourself or any creepy crypto thing. Yes, I've seen Bigfoot itself. Actually, the swamp ape is what I call it because it's okay. not the same as not the same as the classic Sasquatch. I don't think they're the same species at all. But I've seen it three times: once here in Florida, outside of Orlando, back in 1975, and uh, twice in Texas in 2005 in the Big Thicket. Hmm. Interesting. Now, what, <coughs> what, did, the, what did the swamp ape look like when you saw it? it? It's you know same kind of thing: bipedal, hairy, you know, primate-like creature. The neck doesn't sit as low on the on the torso. Uh, its its face is more uh, human-ish, but that has white around the eyes. Uh, yada yada yada. In many cases, uh, it, and the and the foot is very is totally different from the classic trapezoidal Bigfoot trap or track. Uh, it's uh, it, it cannot, based on the foot anatomy alone, be the same species. And I have tracks from both. Uh, I'll tell one of the I'll major tell... differences is that it has a very wide front of foot, like a almost like a swim fin okay. kind of kind of configuration, and the toes are webbed, whereas Bigfoot can splay its toes and they're not connected by any webbing. Interesting. How, th how tall are we talking about here for the uh, <laughs> the swamp the apes swamp about ape. the same size as we are? Okay, so around yeah. six foot tall, five eleven, yeah. six foot tall on yeah. average. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In Bigfoot, we're talking about what, like eight feet? Seven they feet can tall? be as tall as a grizzly. Okay. Now, has there been reports What's that the you... difference? Yeah, it, it, it certainly makes a difference. Yes, that's one of the reasons why I think they're not the same species. Is because again, of the height? Because yeah, do, yeah. do, 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 do they look the same, or do they have different feet? There, or are, some different features. there are similarities and differences, and that's again uh, you know, a, 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 a thing that you need to look at my book, Bigfoot Enigma, because I cover all of this. Okay. That's interesting. 
Yeah, well, that answers yeah. that. Uh, now, Danny in the chat room wants to know, uh, and we kind of answered this earlier, but maybe he didn't catch it. Uh, Bigfoot and UFOs, any connection? Well, as I said before, I my suspicion, unlike everybody who seems to think that they climb out of a flying saucer uh, <laughs> and, and that they're actually aliens themselves, I don't think so. I think Bigfoot is what humans would have been if uh, – and, I, and Dr. Crick, who, who you know identified DNA along with his cohort, started thinking along these same kind of terms. I think our DNA has been engineered. So I think if there is an alien connection, they got a hold of the Bigfoot creature and uh, modified the DNA to, uh, to essentially do the Anastasi uh, and the Anunnaki stories uh, uh, as to uh, create humans as we are. So from Bigfoot to Homo sapien, in other words. Yes. Gotcha. Which actually, that would make sense if they were to do something like that. They found the planet full of Bigfoot running around, big, strong, hairy, you know, creatures, and they took away our strength because we were a lot weaker, I assume. Um, for whatever reason, they felt like taking away all the hair and just giving us hair in certain parts of the body, which thank you for that because I would hate to have that much hair on me. That just wouldn't be good. And they, uh, they made us smarter in a sense, uh, or maybe not. I mean, how smart do we think Bigfoot is? Well, we're, I think they're just as smart as we are in their environment as we are with our technical environment. Uh huh. Do you, I mean, do you, so in other words, you don't think they're technologically sound at all? No, I don't, they don't depend on technology anywhere near like we do. Gotcha. But do they depend on it at all at all? Like, I mean, do they have any technology whatsoever? Well, probably not in the sense that we have it. I mean, you know, the European Bigfoot is almost always shown using tools of some kind, but those right. tools are confined to things like clubs. Uh, you know, we don't, you know, we as a rule don't, don't see them running around with any kind of technology here in the States or elsewhere in the world. Uh, so I don't, I, I just don't know yet. Now we do know that all primates use tools, even crows use tools. So, the you know, tool use by itself, you got to define what tools mean and what technology means in the context right, we're, right, that we're right, talking right. about. Now, where does Neanderthal man mm -hmm. fall into this? You know, Neanderthal is an offshoot that is not directly related to uh, Homo sapiens sapiens. Okay, but I mean, it, Neanderthal man, as uh, you know, science teaches us, was around you know around the same time the Homo sapiens showed up on the planet. Well, there were uh, there were about six different human species running around about the same time. Yes. What are the names of the six species besides Homo sapien? And oh, Homo, Homo erectus, Homo ergaster, Homo heidelbergensis, uh, Homo neanderthalensis, Homo sapiens sapiens, and uh, uh, Homo antecessor. That's a lot of homos. Never yeah. heard of most of those. Well, I mean, you know, if you're going to use that particular word, and especially in <laughs> South Beach. Uh, well, that's a different kind of homo. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, definitely. I was trying to be scientific here. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I certainly hope so. Let's just call them H something or other. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, there were quite a few of them. And, and again, that, that goes back to our original conversation of, you know, the missing link is a, a misnomer. We should not use those words. Yeah, and I completely there, there, agree. There are, gaps in, there are gaps in the human fossil record, yes, but mm. the human fossil record is a three-dimensional tree, not a one-dimensional chain. I agree. Yeah, I completely am with you on that. I don't think we're ever going to find a missing link because it just doesn't exist. It never did. Well, yeah. Never did. I mean, in the strictest sense, yes, we do all the time. If you're going to fill in gaps in on one of the limbs of that tree, but if you're looking for something that is missing in a particular chain of uh, or in, in the human chain of what was then and this, you know, this is now, that doesn't exist. Right. Now, with human DNA itself, I mean, we have thousands of, of junk DNA in our DNA. There is sure. something called the alien gene, which we've talked about here on the show before, uh, which science, you know, cutely enough named it the alien gene. Um, to me, that would be the gene that was manipulated and, and put into us to make us who we are today, uh, whether it was done by a god, by gods, by aliens, by whatever. Um, do you think that that gene is also within Bigfoot, or is that just... Well, there you go. I mean, you know, two of our chromosomes have been merged. So we actually have one less chromosome than a chimpanzee. Right. Uh, so Bigfoot, this is what I want to know. This is why I want to see the genome of the, the red-haired giants. This is exactly the point. You know, if, if the, the red-haired giants have 
a genome that is more closely related into the 36 pairs chimpanzees have than the 35 pairs we have, yada, yada. You get see what I'm getting at? Yep, yep. Okay, it might help to explain what's what and what's going on. And that may very well be why the government don't want us to know the truth. Huh, that's scary. I, I mean, it, you know, it, that's scary. Indir- indirectly, this could turn out to be proof that UFOs are there. That's why they're on it. Right. Wow. Now, do you think a lot of uh, credence <laughs> to the uh, Anunnaki stories uh, from the Sumerian text, do you, do you think there's a lot of, there's anything to believe in that? That the, were you know, genetically manipulated by the Anunnaki, and that Planet X is a real planet that you know that took advantage of humans and, and created us in their image, their likeness. Well, I don't know if I buy Nibiru, but uh, you know, the, the, I, there's certainly there's certainly enough evidence to suggest. And even if you just look at the the pure probability and statistics of it, there's enough planets and galaxies out there that there's got to be other types of creatures out there with intelligence. Now, whether they know how to travel faster than light, I don't know. Uh, yeah, certainly there's a way to do it if you look at Einstein Rosen. But uh, you know, another possibility is we're not that far away from being able to put human brains in mm. cyborg bodies. Mm. Now, if very you want true. something that's yeah. going to live for a very, 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 very long time, doesn't that make sense? Yeah, and it actually correlates to a story we read earlier here before we had you on the air. <laughs> No. Uh, bless you, by the way. Where we were, we were talking about how we might not encounter genetic, you know, aliens uh, when we th- when we try to find aliens in space. What we might encounter is artificial intelligence, some AIs, some robots that are out there, and that makes sense in a sense where you know we're going to find planets and maybe there was life before and that life died off and the remnants of what's there now is a robotic, you know, planet. Uh, full of AI, that's a possibility. That that might happen here on Earth in about well, a, a couple and, hundred and years. Well, and it may also ex- explain the alien abductions. If Very you true. think about it, uh, you know, if they're trying to breed humans for a purpose, uh, if you have a, a race of cyborgs that can travel you know, interstellarly, wh- what would they do if they got here and they wanted to do things that a cyborg can't do, like reproduce? Very true. Well, they could always remanufacture. Well, yeah, Same but it, you know, but you you know, you're also dealing with an extremely narrow gene pool, so cloning is going to have its it's, it's going to have its limitations. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's and, true. You know, and humans and have a, a surprisingly narrow gene pool that they're equating to the you know, Tambora uh, uh, eruption uh, as uh, creating a genetic bottleneck. Maybe that's true, but maybe we started with a very small genetic population to begin with. Well, we started with two uh, white people in the jungle. Well, <laughs> potentially. You know, I don't know. <laughs> shall, we, shall we all do a Tarzan yell? <laughs> please don't, then, please don't, those two no. white people, they spread out pretty quickly, let me tell you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, not too bad so far. A lot of people well, on this planet. Seven, yeah, seven maybe, billion. Maybe women had a big, bigger litter back then. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Three at a time, yeah, probably, yeah. possibly. God, stop it, stop it! My vagina uh, is so angry right now. Oh, <laughs> oh wow! Oh, thanks, thanks for that visual. Hey, By the way, started it. Scott, are you going to be anywhere near uh, here in Florida? Are you going to be somewhere uh, doing any uh, kind of talks or lectures in the near future? Yeah, I'm going to be at Spooky Empire, and I'll do a book signing. Uh, I think it's. I mean, I, let me look it up while we're on here before I give you bad information. Uh, I think it's tw- I think it's 12 noon on Friday, and then two o'clock on uh, Saturday and Sunday. Not this coming weekend, but the following weekend at the Orange County Convention Center. I think it's going to be on the west in the west uh, concourse. Oh, uh, September, October. Yes, a signing table. No, signing table is at 6 p.m. Sorry about that. And then uh, two o'clock p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. I'll also be talking <laughs> – oh, you're going to love this one, because especially in the context of tonight. I'll be doing the Sick and Twisted panel discussion nice. at 9 p.m. on Friday. Very nice. Uh, then, we got a, then we've got an author's network at, at noon, uh, which is we'll have all the authors that are attending Spooky Empire this year at noon. Uh, then I'm going to be doing Multimedia Horrors at 4 p.m. On uh, Saturday, an intergalactic terror panel at 5 p.m. Intergalactic terror panel? Where is that at? 
That's Spooky Empire, too. Spooky Empire? Okay, so same place. Okay, good. Intergalactic I like terror. that. Right. What? <laughs> and, then they, and then they recently drafted me to do a, a panel at 1 o'clock on Sunday. This panel will eat your soul. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, so that's... This is some of the best it, panel names I've ever heard of. That sounds so These good. These are. Yeah, These good. panel names win at life. I know. <laughs> what? What? And uh, then finally in October, just before Halloween, I'm going to be doing a book signing at Copperfish Books in uh, Punta Gorda. Oh, nice. You didn't make it out to uh, MUFON this year at the symposium, right? Because I didn't see No, I didn't go to MUFON. I would have loved to. Denise Stoner was up there, and I love Denise. She's she's a great lady. Uh, And actually, she's one of my sources that I used in the the new book, Weird Monsters, Mm -hmm. uh, for for the MUFON information on the Newport Lizard Man. Uh, but in any case, uh, you know, th- that's what I've got coming for uh, November, well, uh, for October. N- and then uh, November, I think I'm going to do a couple of Saturday uh, events in, in downtown Winter Haven that are, you know, uh, um, I think that's, no, that is, we don't have any November. That, that goes to no- December, excuse me. They canceled the November ones because of the holidays. But then I'm going to do December 10th and December 17th. In downtown Winter Haven at the Saturday Market, that'll be in Central Park. My goodness, you're a busy man. <clears throat> Try to be. We just got back, my son and I, from uh, Mothman Festival, and that was great. Actually, it almost it almost completely screwed me to the wall. Uh, I bought a, I bought more books up there than I've ever bought up there, and I <laughs> sold out of all my books and had to order them and was sweating. I'm not going to get them in time for Spooky Empire, and it was just confirmed, and they arrived today. So thank God I've got my stock back. So all the earnings, all the all the earnings, all the money you made, you ended up spending in books you bought. Yeah, well, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I've got some pretty heavy inventory, so come and get a good deal and <laughs> have me That's sign funny. your book, give you the autograph, yada yada yada, and get me my money back so I have something to buy Christmas presents with this year. <laughs> That's funny stuff. The struggle uh, of the authors, I tell you. It's a struggle. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, it's funny because we... I've never sold out completely like that before of all of my books at one signing. You know, I've sold out wow. of a new book, but I've never, ever, ever sold out of every single book I had. And I just like, whoa. Uh, it, it's, 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 it was mind-boggling. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I think they had like 30,000 people up there this year. Oh, wow. Oh, I mean, it was so, it was so crowded, it was, it was standing room only. And wow, uh, they, they had me in a great location. I was right right behind the Mothman statue on on Central Park there. So, wow, that's very, huge. very cool. That, you know, it's funny because I, I, I've always wondered, you know, what gets a bigger crowd going, ufology or cryptozoology? Like, what do you think is a bigger crowd for these type of events? Uh, actually, I think ufology probably gets bigger crowds. The cryptozoology, because we haven't come up with anything concrete recently, uh, has uh, yeah, kind of kind of petered out the interest. But as soon as somebody either comes up with another monumental hoax, please don't. <laughs> oh, God, please don't. Or something something really interesting happens uh, that is extremely unusual. Uh, there'll be a, you know, another upswing. That day. But for the moment, it's a really good environment to be doing research. And that's what I'm going to, as soon as this foot ulcer that uh, should be healed as of tomorrow, when I see the doctor to finally get the bandage off, I'll be back out in the woods doing my thing. There you go. Any chance you're going to uh, check out maybe the UFO Congress uh, next year in February? In February? It's possible, but I've got a, I've got a talk coming up in February up in the, uh, uh. Uh, in the Ocala National Forest. That would uh, put a wrinkle in it, yeah. Yeah, well, if it's the same weekend, it definitely does. I'm not sure. Uh, I think I think we're doing the talk. Uh, oh, yeah, it's on the 18th at uh, at the uh, Fort McCoy uh, uh, Civic Center or uh, 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 you, you know, whatever. <laughs> There's a there's a community center <laughs> the up thing there. The thing is a thing. Yada yada yeah, yada. yada. Thing, I've never yeah. been there before, and somebody else set it up, so I don't know what they call it. But it's a it's it's a you know a, a community center up there. I hope we can run into you next year somewhere at one of these uh, conventions, man. We were at like I said, yeah. Schools. We're looking forward to talking with you. Yeah. Face, face, face. Well, I'd like to do a live show with you sometime. That'd be fun. Oh my Absolutely. goodness, we had we had a blast yeah, yeah. at that symposium here in Orlando. We, uh, about, we did a bunch of. How about we do and... a Bigfoot hunt sometime? I would love. For that. Yeah. 
I'm I am cautiously aggressive. I'm down for that. <laughs> I would love for that, but I just saw the Blair Witch, the new one uh, earlier today, and I'm not too sure about going into the woods for a while because it, it, it's oh, a couple of, it's creepy. It's a little creepy. I'm just I used creepy. to live up there. That thing is so nonsensical. <laughs> It's called fiction for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, just yeah, saying, yeah, just because yeah. you don't believe in it doesn't mean it's not true. That's all I'm right. saying. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Scott, man, it's been awesome. We're almost out of time here. Uh, once again, Pangea Institute, give up the website so everybody who's listening can go and uh, bookmark it and check out your work and what you're doing and where you're going to be at and follow along. Sure. www.pangea, that's spelled P-A-N-G-E-A, Institute, all spelled out and rubbed together, dot U-S. There you go, guys. Check out uh, Scott's work. Great stuff, Scott. We got to have you back on soon. Uh, you know, as soon as uh, maybe uh, early, early next year before the uh, conference, because uh, we love well, the market team. You're that'd awesome. be that'd be great. Let's communicate. I'd like to I'd like to take you on all out in your backyard down there uh, and uh, show you around. Oh my cool. goodness! <laughs> show some Bigfoots. Right here in the backyard. Hey, I'm, I'm down to uh, do a little uh, Bigfoot, uh, you know, hunting or maybe, uh, you know, uh, ape, what do you, you know, something, something cryptozoology. Yes, yeah, so well, something cryptozoology related anyway. I'd love to do something like that. And, you know, I, I'm an avid sky watcher. I used to be. Anyway. I haven't done it in a, in a few years, but I'm getting back into that now. And, you know, this is another part of, you know, the sky watching, you know, going out there and doing these kind of researches. Uh, so, hey, I'm all, I'm all for it. Scott, well, so, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll communicate through Facebook and see what we can come up with. Put me down. Take care. Sounds great. We'll definitely be on there, guys. Uh, stick around. Doctor J is coming up next in a couple in a minute here. Uh, stick around for that. And uh, next week we have another fantastic show for you guys. So hopefully you you are able to join us again next week here on Sky Watchers Radio. Until then, please keep looking up to the skies, keep questioning authority, and stay safe because it's a dangerous world out there. Love you all. Good night, everybody. So, you know, fortunately for me, I know where there is one that in a private collection, and oh. I've been given permission. So, when I am able to raise the go, you know, GoFundMe or Kickstarter money or whatever I can do, uh, to uh, to ha- to get the test done, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, for Pangea, I'm going to get it, and they're not going to stop me. Oh, do it. Do it, yeah. Scott. Yeah, yeah you got our I will. I will donate, give money to that that yeah. GoFundMe account. We got Absolutely. your back. We got your back on that one. We're way back. We got your back. I do appreciate way that. We've got a, we've got a few dollars that's been back. raised, but I definitely want to do that because I've got a very strong suspicion on the DNA results that are going to come out. And if I'm right, I'm, you know, that, that'll be cool. But uh, I talk about that, by the way, in my book, Bigfoot Enigma. Ah, where shit. on the DNA uh, spectrum do you expect <laughs> the – I'm sorry i got to ask, Name but where in the spectrum do you expect the DNA to end up? Uh, I think we're going to discover a different human species that – probably accounts for our big hairy friend uh well obviously big hairy friend is not the missing link so it's obviously a tangent. oh to god please don't use that word <laughs> <laughs> oh which I, missing I physical anthropology there is no such thing as a that's missing a yeah link. that's a complete that's what i agree link. with i don't think okay. there's a missing that's, link. that's like a four-letter word really because there really isn't a it really is the link well you oh, have okay. to well there is you, you well, have hold, to on, hold, on, hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on there is an evolutionary gap that we still can't account for between, you know, where we are today and where, you know, our ancestors, I guess. Yeah, is the best here, way here's it. the thing, though. And many, this is, this there is, are many, many gaps. Many the gaps, problem yeah. is everybody looks at evolution as a linear thing, and right. it's not. It's, you know, when, when you, we talk about family tree, we're talking about a three-dimensional tree. It mm-hmm. branches off in all kinds of directions, and it doesn't necessarily lead to the same place. Correct. So, okay, I'll give you that. I mean, that's and that's why I don't like missing link. Missing link assumes a chain, and a chain is linear. Correct. That's I, that's why I can't stand that statement. I completely answered all of what 
in a better way than I was going to say it. So I'm going to say it. Okay, I'll Good appreciate job. that. <laughs> but but uh, I mean, there are many families of man. But uh, you know, and again, I'll relate this to UFO. If there is a UFO connection, which I strongly doubt, between Bigfoot and ufology, because I mean, I you know, I admit sometimes there's all kinds of weird lights and everything, but then swamp mm-hmm. gas that's for a lot of it. But the bottom line is, I'm not so sure that they are alien as many people seem to believe. I think that what we're we are, we're looking at, if indeed aliens are involved in any way, shape, or form, is Bigfoot is what humans would be if aliens hadn't intervened and messed around with the genome. Now, my question following that up, though, is, Scott, why haven't we found one dead somewhere alive I'm not so walking sure around? Haven't. You know, why haven't again, we discovered one? Again, I'll refer you to Bigfoot Enigma. I'm not so sure we haven't. Well, what, and, I, well, and I give some examples in the book. I mean, government-wise, maybe they found something. Maybe they know something that we don't. But I'm the common that. folks, the common folks that are like like yourself, people that are out there, like actually looking for Bigfoot. Why hasn't somebody come across an actual Bigfoot and, and either shot it or shot some well, real footage or you know done something to prove that these things are real? Well, first of all, you know, even with these electronic cameras, which are great, by the time you pull one out and you let the thing charge up so you can take a picture, the thing's gone. So, I mean, they're very quick. They don't hang around. Yeah, but what about the trail cams that everybody spreads out all over the place? Well, again, again, anything we touch carries our scent. They're probably way more into things like pheromones and scent than we are because we've lost those abilities. So we put anything out there, they're going to know. Plus, I'm sure at this point they recognize technology. True. There's uh, another way around it now with technology being what it is. How about flying drones over, like, mountain air, mountains and trying yes, to see if you and like Pangea that? Yes, and just acquired two drones so we can use nice. them for the purpose. Yes. Oh, very cool, very cool. See, that, yeah. I would think technology is going to eventually help us actually capture something in, like this. In time, real. I'm sure it will. Yeah. But, you know, if you, if you know the story of Zena, I'm not so sure she wasn't a Bigfoot. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, Igor's... A, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with that story. You're going to have to explain that the one. The warrior princess? Late, late, 19th, late 19th century, a Bigfoot-like woman was captured in the Republic of Georgia, what is the old USSR. And she was hairy and totally hairy, mute, uh, understood commands and words, but really never spoke, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Had uh, several children. Four of them died. Two of them survived. Uh, according to the anthropological people in Russia, uh, her her son that survived Kiwit uh, had relic hominin traits in the skull that they exhumed. They have claimed to have exhumed her body and she was human. However, I have severe doubts that the body they cover, recovered because nobody knew where she was buried, all those people are dead, uh, was actually her. And uh, so, I mean, that you know, you need to get Igor Borshev on your on your show for that story because he knows more about it than I do. But I did cover the story in Bigfoot Enigma and hit all the highlights. Uh, there was also a story in the same area coming out of uh, KGB releases after the end of the Cold War, where they uh, ca- had captured a, another creature like that in the same general area, and these are covered with hair and lice and all that good stuff. And uh, they thought it was a, a, a Russian partisan. Uh, and it, you know, one story says they shot it as a traitor, and another said they let it go. So I don't know what the, you know, what the, the issue is there. But these things have turned up all over the place. And uh, you know, it, I'm not so sure that they don't bury their own, if not consume them. That's interesting right there. Yeah. All right, everybody, welcome back to Skywatchers Radio, right here live on PSN Radio. Now, without any further ado, our guest of the evening is here with us, Scott Marlowe. Welcome to Skywatchers. Welcome back, sir. Yeah, well, thanks for having me back. It's always a pleasure. It's always fun having you here with us and uh, and talking to you is always a lot of fun. Uh, you know, you Pangea Institute, what you do with cryptozoology blows my mind because I'm not a big 
Bigfoot believer, as you know. But it's always fun to hear, you know, folks that are in, involved in that world and, and, you know, the stuff that's been going on since last time we spoke. What has been going on in Cryptozoology? Anything that I've missed personally? Uh, well, the only good news is for the last year we haven't had any uh, uh, hoaxes from uh, yes. a certain certain individual <laughs> that I shall remain nameless <laughs> that everybody <laughs> knows. Actually, both of them have been kind of quiet. Uh, so uh, it, it's it's uh, that's probably done a lot. Although everybody has spent most of their time backbiting and backstabbing. Yes. Which seems to, which, yeah. which seems to be a you know a constant thing here in the Bigfoot dove hill. I wish they'd spend as much time looking for the big hairy guy as they do knifing each other in the back. But what can I say? See, that's you that's know? one of the issues that I have with uh, cryptozoology is the the folks. It, it, look, it's not that different in, in ufology. Let me tell you. Uh, well, you know, there's just, a lot of backstabbing you know, in ufology also. <laughs> well, hey, yeah, I'm sure there is. Uh, you know, I've got a few friends in MUFON. You know, uh, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm, I'm familiar. Uh, but uh, then again, look at the presidential debate. Talk about crazy. Yeah, there you go. That's really not <laughs> going to I mean, that would have made Jerry Springer proud. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> no. I had to go there. I can't stand either of them, so what can oh, I Oh, yeah, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can kind of tolerate Trump. I can't stand Hillary, but I can tolerate Trump, and I like some of his – points and some of his views okay. there's some stuff that really scares the crap out of me out of both of them uh well, frankly, i think they're both both sides of the same coin uh, uh, they are the they're, they're, that's, that's a major issue above. yeah but scott that's a major issue we've had in this country for the last 50 years it's, it's been yeah, the I know, but same Trump club running everything same. believe me believe me he's more of the same uh, he did very good on that debate, though, considering he did, that he though. was probably high on coke the entire time. I'm being sarcastic well, hey, again. <laughs> some of the greatest work in media think, has been done I high on coke. I think the New York Times did it right with their cartoon today where Hillary's handing him a hanky and saying, at least you could have come prepared with a hanky. <laughs> <laughs> you know what was great about the debate? After the debate, yeah. they, they had an interview with Trump, and uh, somebody asked him about the sniffles. And he said, oh, it must have been because my, my uh, microphone was malfunctioning. Oh, and it was geez. just picking up more sound than normally. So it was, And he's trying uh -huh. to like, make that well, as an excuse. Pardon I would have just, just been like, I, I did cocaine before the debate. <laughs> I would just I would admit, I, <laughs> I did a lot of coke before the debate. That's, that's, that's what's really scary about Trump is literally he could have been like, yeah, I did, I did a bump before I did a debate. And his followers would still be he like, yeah, Trump. It, he could have done it on the air for crying out loud. <laughs> He like, only yes, wound up with Trump. more supporters. You know, I think I, I, I think Bugs Bunny got it right. What a maroon! <laughs> oh God! <laughs> but that's going to be our next really president. It's really sad that you never see. Uh, what was it? Um, who's the one with the red giant mustache? That uh, I know who you're talking about. Sam. 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 Yosemite Sam. Yosemite, Yosemite Sam. Sam. Yeah. yeah. Do you know that they've actually taken Yosemite Sam off TV because he was too violent? Well, gee, yeah. I mean, look, at, look at some of the cartoons from the 1950s. I mean, please. Really? Really? He's <laughs> yeah. too violent? The How road about the Roadrunner? Road you know what I'm That's saying? Like, they're not too violent? Come on. The, Coyote's oh, always trying to blow up the damn Roadrunner for no reason. Yes, but the, there was a big difference between children in the 50s and children in the, two, the 2016s. We knew not to do that at home. Oh, Very, yeah, true. That's true. Very true. That is true. We did. Yeah. Yeah, hey, we did. listen, what's really yeah. scary is Preparation H actually has the first instruction being do not put on mouth. Well, oh. I mean, I hate to tell you, but in Hollywood, they use it to take lines off of people. I mean, no, stop yeah, it. Yeah, they actually no. do. That, 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 that's a trick to take out wrinkles because it's got an astringent in it. Uh-uh, that's so nasty. Oh, my God. Uh, it is nasty. Of course, it, uh, yeah, everything I, I would assume that you use a tube that has not been used for other purposes, if you know what I mean. Ooh. <laughs> that it feels good on the whole. Hey, so anyway, about Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah, let's move on to something <laughs> yeah, let's more incredible. Bigfoot. Wow. In wow. that vein. Uh, you know, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> It's your fault, anyway, Scott. I blame you for the, for the well, degradation of this conversation. <laughs> well, I was getting to the point that we had a little argument on Facebook earlier today with a friend of mine that, uh, yeah, that basically that was pointing out that there wasn't much difference between the debates and Bigfoot uh, operation lately. 
So, oh, no. you know, you know here, here's the thing, though. <laughs> there is more credible evidence that we have a legit chance of finding Bigfoot than finding a good candidate for president. I agree. I, you know, I've already and that's decided a sad I'm statement. For Bernie. So, you know, I mean, that's yeah, all. Bernie would have had my vote if he would not have come out and endorsed Hillary Clinton so quickly. He like had he, did. To. he didn't have a choice or he couldn't yeah. stay a Democrat. Are you kidding? Besides the fact anybody that crosses the Clintons winds up dead. Then there's that. Yeah, yeah that is true. a little bit un- un- you know, uncanny there. The, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah they, well, they're either extremely lucky or they certainly, um, you know, <laughs> stack the deck. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> you know, it's funny. Uh, Bernie, who wasn't exactly a millionaire before the you know the uh, election started, he, he was okay. But he, he had reported he had less than like 200000 in the bank or something like that, you know, before the, okay. uh, the whole thing started, before he ran for president. Yep. After he dropped out of the race officially, he went and bought cash a a house for five hundred thousand dollars. Well, that's nice. I mean, if, I wonder who then, paid for that. Then, house. then we know, then we know what Trump is doing with the money and everything else too. So what's the difference? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, you know I, I didn't realize he had finally purchased Doral. I'll never go there again. <laughs> oh, that was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I used to know the owners of Doral, but I didn't know they sold it. So anyway. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, it's not that bad. If you're yeah. golfing stuff. Yeah, but that's down your area, so you know what I'm talking about. It is. It is. So, I'll tell you yeah. what. It, it's funny though, because uh, you know, not to go on a, on a complete political tangent here, but uh, down here in my area, in the Miami area, Trump is actually not that hated as he is in some parts of the country. Like people down here actually like Trump. Like he, he calls Miami his second home outside of New York for a couple of reasons. One, because of the Palm Beach, um, you know, I, yeah, I, that but, he built. I, I, I know. I used to. I used to live down there, so I know. Yeah, so he's really well liked down here because. And, he and in the winter, it might as well be Manhattan South. Yeah, yeah, yeah. straight up. I mean, that's no. uh, very legit. He is actually really well liked. In fact, I, I, I can guarantee you right now, he's going to win Florida. I mean, that's, uh, a, that's so a given. Freaking he's hope. Gonna, of course, yeah, it all depends on whether Pam. Bond I don't care about the, that vote. I care about the other vote in Florida. Well, you know, we know we yeah. already know about the Chad, so let's not go there. <laughs> no, I, no, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm yeah. talking about what is the proposition. We don't take the 14? president anyway. I don't understand why everybody gets so up in arms about it. The, the <laughs> electoral not our votes. decision. The electoral <laughs> votes. Oh no, the president's already been picked. I mean, this this whole That's thing. Just, it's done. You know, it's a, yeah, it's a done you know, I mean, deal. This, it's this a dog just, and pony show. This is just a show in order to let us think we have the freedom we think we have. It is. It's, no, it's right. like the choice like in the Matrix. That's exactly what it is. I, yeah. you know, especially you know those of us who work in you know the UFOlogy field and the cryptology field and anybody who's ever done a little bit of research out of side of mainstream media. If you vote, you're silly. You, I, I'm just you're silly. Oh, well, <laughs> like, I mean, if you just want to do it for fun, that's fine. But if you think that it actually counts, then you're silly. Well, I mean, take the Aurora. Sad truth. Yep. I mean, you know, there, you know, in your area, the Aurora uh, crash is a, is a great example. In my area, my God, I I deal with it all the time. I've tried to go get DNA from the red haired giants, and they've stopped me. And I'm not talking <laughs> men in black. I'm talking about the, tele- the, the the government gets on the phone and says you're not going. Oh wow, really? Oh yeah, wow. really. That's wow, that's up. extreme. That's serious. Like just nope. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't gotten that call and yet for anything. And then they seize the skeletons. <laughs> 